Hello, whisky friends. Konnichiwa, whisky tomodachi. Uh, 안녕하세요, whisky 친구들. Welcome to whisky review number 105 here on Whisky Whistle. I'm your host, Mark, and we're looking today at uh, Hibiki Suntory Whisky Japanese Harmony. Now, this is a Japanese blended whisky. It's a blend of malt whiskies and a blend of grain whiskies. All from, well, most, I'm not sure, actually, no, not all. But the largest portion of would be uh, the distilleries that Suntory operates. And those are Yamazaki, Hakushu, and um, uh, Chita, it's known as. That's the grain distillery. So those are the three main components in, in this whiskey. Although um, the website tells us that there's uh, uh, innumerable um, whiskies involved in this blend. Or perhaps ten. Um, and... These may be from other distilleries in, in Japan. In fact, they most uh, they absolutely are, because this is known as Japanese whiskey. Um, I don't think there's anything other than Japanese whiskey in there. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't th I don't think I am in this case. Anyway, um, we're gonna get this poured. We're gonna do a couple of things today. So we're gonna do the classic um, neat and with water tastings: the nose, the smell. Uh, the palate, the taste, um, and the finish, the aftertaste of the whiskey, both neat and with a few drops of water. This is 43% ABV, and uh, there's no indication of um, uh, chill filtering or uh, color being added. Okay, so uh, no information about that. Um, uh, anyway, so then we'll uh, go through the regular tasting, and then we're going to... Uh, try something with a little bit of uh, uh, ice uh, in the glass, okay? Um, anything else? And then at the end of the review, I'm going to show a few things that are up and coming here on the channel, okay? So try to stay tuned right through to the end, and why not, let's, so let's get this poured already, shall we? A beautiful bottle. It's got 24 facets, which um, uh, I guess is a... Um, what can I call that? Representative of the 24 seasonal divisions in the Japanese calendar. And uh, a very cool, um, very cool glass cork. Quite heavy, quite substantial. Um, probably the intention here is that uh, you would not want to dispose of the bottle. You want to keep it. So that's possible. Uh, if you hear a baby crying, I do apologize. Uh, that's, uh, that's my third daughter, May Karen. Right, we're pouring this. Let's get it poured. And here we go. I'm going to pour quite, quite a bit for this review. There we are. That's, uh, 40 plus milliliters, I believe. The reason being is that I'd like to have enough, uh, that... Uh, pouring it over ice will uh, be uh, a worthwhile experiment. Okay, so there we're all set up. <clears throat> okay, and uh, color-wise, pretty much a standard amber. Boy, I sure hope you can't hear uh, the, the crying that's going on. Uh, that's an a unhappy baby in, uh, in, the, in the next room. Uh, anyway, color-wise, so standard amber... Uh, or a uh, fairly fairly dark gold, golden hue. And um, let's get on to the nosing. And, uh, well, well, actually, no, we should talk a little bit about uh, the blend. I've got a, a few notes prepared. Um, so we'll let that sit and uh, breathe a little bit. I apologize for the wait. Um, so again, this is uh, Hibiki Suntory Whiskey Japanese Harmony. This was released in 2015. Um, it's a non-age statement whiskey, so no age is stated. Um, so the former youngest was a 12-year-old, so this is obviously younger than the 12-year-old. Uh, released in 2015, I believe uh, this was to be a, an entry-level NAS to support, uh, support the brand and introduce it to, uh, to new newcomers to Japanese whiskey who have been, let's say hesitant because of the uh, the steep prices um, 
And a third reason I think that they came up with this particular uh, whiskey is to take a bit of the pressure off of the 12 and 17 year old and older, the 21 and the 30 year old Hibiki. Um, uh, because uh, there's just a lot, a big, big, big demand for Japanese whiskey, uh, especially with age statements. So it's pretty hard to uh, uh, commit to, uh, to fulfill, I guess, fulfill the orders um, for the older ones with all of the demand for the single malt. Okay, so the Yamazaki single malt and the Hakushu single malt. So such a big demand uh, for those. So put out a non-age statement, um, a very well-made non-age statement uh, blended Japanese whiskey at 43% ABV, so that's nice. And uh, hopefully uh, those sales that it generates will take a little bit of the pressure off. Anyway, that's just my own opinion. Um, now, it's still not cheap. This is actually 85,000 won here in uh, in Seoul, South Korea. That's where I reside. I tell that uh, every time. Uh, I'm Canadian, in fact, in case this is your first time watching uh, the show. Um, and uh, in other markets, I've seen that it's about 40 to 50 pounds in, um, in, uh, in, in England, in Great Britain. Um, and I think I've seen something around about 60 70 dollars us uh and it's uh, pushing a hundred dollars canadian i do believe uh so not cheap um it's about the price of some 15 uh 15 year old blended uh, malt whiskeys in fact uh one in particular that just recently was released oh my goodness uh okay let's carry on here um casking uh, American oak, uh, white oak casks, sherry casks have been used. Uh, the Mizunara, Japanese oak casks, have been used. Um, I do also believe that some Umeshu, the Japanese plum wine casks, have been used, uh, which may also be Mizunara. Uh, and the whiskey, as I mentioned, Yamazaki Hakushu Chita, that's the grain whiskey. Uh, plus, uh, at least seven others uh, are involved here. Uh, the master blender, uh, this is Shingo Tori. This is not the person that you see in the pictures, however. Um, and um, uh, that's the master distiller that you'll see. And um, uh, there's a very interesting article in the Wall Street Journal about this blend uh, from a fellow of the name of uh, Calum uh McCann, is that right? Caleb McCann, I believe he's Irish. <coughs> September 28th, about a year ago, a year ago in fact. And an interesting quote is uh, from him is that, um, well, whiskey as memory and memory as whiskey. So interesting. And I'm going to read actually a quote from that article from the Wall Street Journal. Okay. And uh, yes, wonderful nose here. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, so this is in the middle of the article, so it's just a uh, little little snippet. Um, he's describing his experience tasting Hibiki Japanese Harmony at 10 o'clock in the morning because he had a deadline to meet. <coughs> Pardon me for the coughing. First of all, I made sure the kids were off in school. Then I went for a run in Central Park to clear out any toxins. I showered, settled in my office. I took out the elegant glass bottle. I tore off the plastic around the cork. I sipped it. It hit the palate with a touch of malt and gave out a little rumor of peat smoke. It ran its weather along my chest. Almost immediately, it threw me into a different geography. Cloud cover, seascape, a running break of blue and gray in the sky. I felt myself hover between Ireland and Scotland. This indeed was a whiskey. I let the first sip go down. I had another. Uh, anyway, really interesting article. Have a look at it, quite readable and um, uh, a very interesting description of uh, this particular whiskey. 
and his uh, his thoughts are that uh, Japanese whiskey, relatively relative newcomer, although it has quite a large uh, share of whiskey sales uh, comparatively, given its uh, young age, less than a hundred years, um, that uh, uh, Japanese whiskey, the style straddles Scotland and the malt, the um, uh, Highland styles he, he, he mentions, and then also Irish whiskey is the triple distillation, the, um, uh, I guess we'll call it the um, refining of, uh, of the whiskey. And um, I, can, I can kind of agree in a way. Um, I find the, ja the, the Irish whiskey style to be uh, a little bit more grassy, a little bit more floral, uh, a little bit more... Um, uh, what can I call it? Some, something, something. I, I seem to see some sort of a um, pine tree kind of a scent. Uh, it seems to be a common element in Irish whiskeys for me. Anyway, um, anyway, really interesting quote. Have a look at that again. That was uh, September twenty eighth, the Wall Street Journal. Uh, what is the name of the article? Um, something about drinks. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's get into the nosing and uh, the smelling. The, and we'll get into the flavors, the taste, the finish, the aftertaste, and then with water, and then we'll get into the ice. I've got the ice here. Hopefully, it's staying nice and cold in this um, uh, linen tea towel. Let's hope. Okay, and as is customary on my site, on my site, on my channel here. Uh, we will have a few um, extra advertisements, and um, uh, I've mentioned that before. Uh, there will be two extra advertisements, and these will hopefully end up helping me to support uh, the the cost of uh, continuing with this channel. Let's hope so. As of yet, entirely out of uh, my pockets. Okay. <coughs> And I'm just getting on the, on the tail end of a very long cold. Not a bad cold, but the uh, the effects have been very, very long. So I apologize if I cough a little bit once in a while. So the first little, little short, short little advertisement will appear right here. Welcome back. Let's get into the nose now. This is uh, Suntory Whiskey Hibiki Japanese Harmony. And it certainly is harmonious. There is fruit. Uh, there's a lot of very, very nice oak, oak induced uh, scents, uh, spices, as well as vanillas. And yes, there is a fairly substantial bit of peat uh, coming through here. Now, this would be Japanese peat. Um, bit different I do believe I hope they don't import from uh, from Scotland that would be rather strange anyway fruit and peat and what I find really interesting with um, uh, with this nose when you smell it neat is and you can give it enough time which I probably can't hear while we're doing the review uh, I get some interesting kind of candy and chocolate notes um, and dessert notes like uh, creme caramel, orange creams, uh, like from the, um, uh, what's that, uh, Quality Street would be the one of the names of the uh, filled chocolates that, uh, that you get at Christmas time. What's the popular one in Canada called? It's gone. I've been away for too long to remember such details. Uh, also strawberry creams, uh, uh, orange creams, vanilla pods, and the peat smoke. This peat smoke has a hint of uh, natural, very natural, very nice uh, rubber. Now, that may sound like that's terrible, but no, in fact, it's not. When you get used to peat, uh, that is a fairly common scent. Okay, interesting. And the fruits, I, I wrote here apples, cherries, as well as green plums. So anyway, very fresh. 
and it's really hard to detect the grain whiskey here on the nose. Um, I think what um, uh, Suntory does, the grain whiskey, they really focus on uh, the aging. They really focus on having proper casking. Um, and uh, they kind of consider the grain whiskey in their blended whiskeys to be what they call, I believe it's uh, dashi, which we may call um, the broth. Um, so if you want to make a nice soup, you have to start with a good broth. And the other ingredients interact with the broth uh, to heighten the, the flavor, uh, the flavors that, that come out. Uh, anyway, so they've done a great job with that. And since this grain whiskey is so, is so well uh, aged and casked, um, it really does uh, blend in very nicely with, uh, with the malt whiskies. Hmm. Yeah, a, little, a lot of orange in this is orange uh, candy, orange cream, orange um, kind of uh, icing, um, you know, the inside of the chocolate. That's, uh, that's what, I'm, what I'm getting here a lot as time passes. Anyway, I don't want to let too much time pass, okay? Let's get onto the palette now. This is neat. Hmm. Big rush of sweetness. Um, I wrote here, big sweet arrival. Lots of oak-induced vanilla flavors. And then uh, the peat uh, comes into play. Soft smoked fruits. Um, I've written here sour apple and plum. And, uh, and then a, uh, a chalk candy uh, or cigarette candy, like Popeye. I don't know if they still sell those. Uh, I'm getting something similar to that. Um, so it's basically um, a stick candy, and it's covered with a little bit of a uh, uh, probably corn um, cornstarch and icing sugar uh, kind of dusting. Anyway, that's what I'm getting there. And the finish here... Fairly mild fruit, uh, some malt, and then something like a fizzy candy. Um, I forget the name of them. What's it just called? Fizz? Um, I can see them. They come in a row, different colors, and the outside is just a boring hard candy. And the inside uh, kind of fizzes and, and sparkles in your mouth. Okay. Anyway, so that's um, uh, Japanese harmor ha harmony, Japanese harmony as uh, as I know it. Okay, now we're going to add just a touch of water, not very much here. Um, it is forty three percent. We could probably add more. Uh, I just don't want to. All I want to do is just to coax out some of these sweet flavors. Okay, so I'm going to put in a little bit less than this uh, two or three milliliter spoon that I've got here. So it's definitely less than two milliliters being added. Okay, I don't know, about three drops. Okay, and we will roll that around. When you add water, make sure you give it time to, to mix in. And you can see whether it's mixing or not. Um, when it hasn't all mixed yet, you'll see little tiny streaks, little tiny uh, kind of like uh, lines, wavy lines uh, that run through. And then when it's all mixed up, uh, it should be pretty, um, let's say, calm again. And I think I've succeeded. Now, by the way, I've heard that uh, adding water to whiskey um, 
there's a little bit of reaction between the water and the whiskey. And uh, apparently it is exothermic, releasing heat. Now, of course, you wouldn't really notice. It would be so minute. Um, but uh, apparently this is what happens. Um, <clears throat> so it's not just diluting the water. There is um, some, uh, however small, some chemical changes that occur uh, in the chemical, uh, chemical compounds of the whiskey itself. Okay, that looks good. Let's get on to that now. Uh, this is Japanese uh, Harmony from Hibiki. Hibiki Japanese Harmony with a few drops of water added. And before we smell it, we'll have another very short uh, word from the YouTube advertisers right here. Welcome back with water now. Hibiki Japanese Harmony. Now again, the peat is basically gone and you're left with just a beautiful bouquet of, of fruits and vanilla and these uh, caramel, creme caramel and orange creams, strawberry creams. Very nice. And maybe a little, little bit of mint added on the top of the creme caramel. Pokey, maybe. Okay, beautiful nose. I wrote here, uh, very little peat, sweet fruitiness, more pronounced um, vanilla pods, creme caramel, orange cream, strawberry creams, you name it, creams. Okay, uh, decidedly more orange. So if peat's your thing, then you don't add water to this because you're really not going to get um, that quality that you like. Okay, now on to the palette. Cheers all. Hmm. Now, when it hits your mouth, it's now almost purely sweet with just a hint of um, uh, some tanginess, a little bit of sourness, very little bitterness. However, it, as it develops, you do get a little bit of dryness, a little bit of astringency there. Okay. Um, the fruit gets a little bit riper, a little bit more ripe, riper. Probably both uh, valid. Correct me if I'm wrong. I doubt that I am in this case. There's a reason why I doubt that. <laughs> okay. Hmm. The fruits have um, gotten decidedly. Um, uh, riper and um, I'm getting ripe black ripe black plums and almost about a day maybe two uh, before the ripe turns before the ripe uh, the ripe before the plum turns and you have to throw it away um, fruit soda so again there's something um, a little bit sparkly here in the flavor in the mouthfeel, and it's very fruity. So fruit soda develops. There's a little bit of pepperiness here now, and that's that astringency plus the bit of um, um, bitterness, okay? Uh, a little bit drier, as I said, and that just seems to be, um, um, well, altogether sweeter on the palate as well. Hint of dryness, um, uh, as as it develops on the mouth. Mm. And I'm pretty sure that I can taste um, some of that umeshu or 
um, Japanese green plum wine uh, cask coming through there. And again, that's a really common um, wine and common fruit uh, that is offered here in, in, in Korea as well, known as meshu. Okay. Uh, the finish, a little bit drier, uh, still quite fizzy and tangy, still very fruity um, and uh, malty. Lengthwise, it's actually quite long considering. And again, I believe that is part and parcel due to the effect of very, very active cask maturation. Okay. All right, so that is Hibiki Suntory Whiskey Japanese Harmony, uh, both neat and with water. And we should probably talk about a score before we carry on to uh, the, uh, uh, the ice. We'll get into a bit of ice here. Okay, so I'm giving it 85 out of 100. That's the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Japanese Harmony from Hibiki, from Suntory Whiskey. And uh, the nickname for this one is Nihongo Num Num. <laughs> Nihongo means Japanese. Uh, so Japanese Num Num. It's easy to love. Um, Malton grain in probably next to perfect balance. Um, again, I believe the 17, I, re I reviewed the 17 a while back. I'll put a link to that as well as to the other Suntory whiskeys, the Hakushu and the Yamazaki that I've done. Okay, I'll put links um, towards the end of the review. Um, the uh, the malt and green are in wonderful balance. I think maybe the 17s a little bit more but well balanced, and I do recall absolutely loving that. Um, okay, now, however, the 17 year old is sold at an astro astro astronomical astronomical price now. Uh, I would not buy a bottle of the 17 year old uh, unless I was just you know. Uh, Mr. Uh, well-to-do about town um, um, old money type of guy you know uh, anyway I would definitely buy this again uh, I think that um, given the current market prices of Japanese whiskey this is probably the where the, the where the place where you want to start okay for Suntory whiskey um, very interesting fruity flavors and altogether uh, decidedly pleasant. Okay, so 85 out of 100. Um, I wish it were just a tad less expensive than it is, uh, so that way it could really get into the uh, uh, the young up and comers that uh, that want to try Japanese whiskey, but simply um, you know don't have the the cashola uh, to make that happen, uh, so they may uh, they may be tugging at their shirt collars uh, if if they're going to consider buying that one. But you know what? What you can do then is go in together with a few friends. If you're in a whiskey club, uh, make that one of the next purchases. Um, even if it's a Scotch whiskey club, just tell everybody, hey, listen, we can't just focus on Scotch because the world is full of amazing whiskey. And then try that one okay um, okay so next up let's get on to the um, uh, well equivalent of I guess a highball although that's not really a highball glass but it'll it'll do and um, what will I do here I move that over here and let's get that out of there this is an ice ball maker it's not the greatest one and I froze it uh, to well, as cold as I could, so I've got a fairly, uh, fairly cold ice cube there. I still have yet to figure out how to get the ice to, to freeze with no cracks. Uh, and uh, I think I need a little more in my glass there. That way I have something to do after I finish this review. Just a little more. There we go. Okay. And label straight. Yep. Let's get that poured in there now, shall we? Okay. And um, when you do put ice in your whiskey, um, the bigger the ice, the more the ice, the better. 
and a whiskey, uh, an ice ball would be great because you'll have a little bit less uh, melting and hence uh, a little bit less dilution. Okay, and why I'm spinning it around is to get it as cold as possible, as quick as possible. And what I'm noticing while I do this, there's a, a quite a, a fragrance coming off. Um, it's fruity, uh, it is oaky, and uh, uh, some vanilla as well. Okay, so I think that's probably about cold enough. Okay, uh, and what I noticed, I think I think I did this with the 17 as well. I noticed that the 17 got very syrupy um, at uh, at low temperature, and. By the way, this is spinning now. I'm, I, I think it, the same thing is happening here. Let's give it a try. Mm-hmm. Now, with ice, when it's cold, you're able to take more into your mouth, which helps to negate some of the loss of um, the flavors that uh, that get closed off with um, the cold temperature. Um, but compared to when I started spinning it, it is really getting, uh, very, um, uh, very thick, kind of like cold, um, very cold engine oil. Hmm. You get a whole different experience here now. It's refreshing, virtually no, uh, no smokiness, no peat. Um, any type of bitterness is gone and you're left with a fruity, slightly tangy, uh, sweet concoction. It's not, well, it's not really, it's, it's still whiskey. It's pure whiskey, right? But that would be something, um, if you've got a friend who is uh, stuck on white spirits and mixing them with coke and whatnot, uh, this would be a great way to get them to try whiskey. And you just tell them, you got to try this and, and make sure they haven't had um, a um, uh, vodka and orange or, or whatever, uh, Jack and Coke. Make sure they haven't had that yet because that will ruin their, their palate. Okay. Hmm. It's extremely cold now. I don't think it's that much diluted. You know, uh, the ice ball is still fairly big. It's probably added about, mm, let's say, I don't know, maybe 20 milliliters of liquid to... Uh, uh, to the 45 ish. Okay, so you're probably still well over uh, Well over 20 possibly 30 uh, percent ABV And that's a great way to drink whiskey in the summer Okay, anyway very nice and I'm gonna pour that back into my glass because I don't want it to dilute any further so kind of like a uh, you know, stirred martini. Okay, uh, well, so that was um, Suntory Whiskey Hibiki Japanese Harmony. And a few other things to talk about. Um, this is really interesting. Uh, I won a contest. Thank you very much to uh, Tom and Tal uh, from Angus Dundee. They are the owners of that distillery. And I've gotten uh, a sample of their uh, five decades whiskey. I'll bring that closer for you to see. Uh, tilt it backwards. There we are. Okay. So that's the five decades from Tom and Tal. I've never had Tom and Tal before, so I'm really excited about that. I have had a blended whiskey with Tom and Tal in it, um, but uh, I mean, it's pretty hard to decipher if you've never had it um, in, in the first place. Okay. Um, that's that ice ball thingy. Final touch is the brand. Not bad. Um, gotta figure out how to get it not to crack. 
that could be just uh, maybe they all do that. And another thing that I think I haven't mentioned yet is I've got this um, box full of samples from um, uh, from George Kalnecki. And uh, some of them are Canadian whiskey, some of them are labeled. Uh, this one is J.P. Weiser's Legacy, 45 ABV. Others are labeled quite mysteriously, such as number seven. What's number seven? We'll find out. Anyway, so I'm going to have to think of a way to get that into a, a review that will be enjoyable for you. Um, so, uh, my idea is, is that I will film half of the review, uh, not knowing what it is, and then I will contact George and he'll tell me, um, and then we'll carry on with, uh, this part two, uh, knowing which whiskey it is. So that will be interesting. Okay. And, um, a little bit, a little bit late in the show, but some other shout outs. Uh, to uh, Swami Suave. Uh, now I, I gave him a shout out a couple of reviews ago. One more time today. Please check out his YouTube channel S W A M I S U A V E, Swami Suave. He also reviews whiskeys and other spirits, and he's got a great channel. A um, little bit shorter reviews than mine in length, so that may be very appealing for some. I think I'm a little long, long winded. I apologize for that. Um, and he also has a very good collection of uh, older uh, whiskey reviews, older whiskeys that he's reviewed. Uh, the 18-year-olds, the 25-year-olds, uh, and so on and so forth. So please check out Swami Suave. Uh, another big shout out to uh, Jake Hanlon. He's a Canadian and um, he's been quite active uh, here on the channel and also uh, on my Facebook site, which you're welcome to have a look at. That's also Whiskey Whistle. Um, by the way, Twitter also Whiskey Whistle, Instagram Whiskey Whistle, and even Vine. I've got a, a few Vines out there. That's also also Whiskey Whistle. Okay, so have a look at those. Uh, Jake Hanlon, he uh, he congratulated me on uh, surpassing 100 reviews. So I'd like to congratulate him. Uh, for, uh, well, just for being a great, uh, all-around great guy. And he also does a bit of blogging about Canadian whiskeys and whiskeys in general. Um, I'll, um, I'll put a link in the description uh, so you can find his, um, his blog, okay? Uh, anyway, that's about it uh, for me here. Thanks for tuning in and um, stay tuned. Lots coming up. Uh, the George Kalnecki series, the Tom and Tall Five Decades, and then I've got a whole host of uh, great things uh, to come. Uh, some of those from whis whiskeys, from brands that uh, I've said I love a lot, and some of those from ones I've never done before. And um, uh, some big holes in my collection are going to be filled very soon. Okay, so stay tuned. Please subscribe. You can do that by clicking the link down in the corner here. Okay. Uh, click subscribe. Why subscribe? Uh, you'll get the reviews first. And also it really does help a lot uh, in the, uh, uh, the YouTube matrix to take Whiskey Whistle and move it up a notch or two or three uh, so that uh, I can attract more viewers, more subscribers, and in turn, uh, hopefully, uh, I can start doing some really inter interesting things with the revenue that I hope to generate, we'll see, uh, with uh, this little channel, okay? Anyway, that's it. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Um, Ohio, uh, what do you say? Ohio gozaimasu. Good morning. Goodbye. Uh, Annyeonghaseyo. Annyeonghaseyo. Goodbye. And have yourselves a great day.